包括，啊，推送的人。你你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，你干的，
So according to Sutra Yana, uh, uh, the ordinary Sangha should always uh, remain something called the 12 qualities of training. And the reason why we need to uh, practice that is to have a renunciation, the genuine sense of renunciation. Tangagi so even you are a Vajra and a practitioner, we should begin from the Mondro. And first of Mondro, the first teaching that is taught is this four thought, because the renunciation <coughs> is very important. So, all of we, we can understand English is very fortunate today because the Kyabjit Dupin Deshanambuji is giving us teaching directly online uh, in English. Therefore, I would like you to uh, listen well and not just listen and practice well. Thank you. Now we're going to do the opening chant. Please join me. Oh, thank you. 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 Thank Sam 
je nam je sambad lo ye je da je da wara je jo tho mo ande bai shi ye ko lo ko do zo Uh, actually, it feels a little bit funny because it's my first time giving talk. I'm giving talk in like on online and also like in front of a screen alone. So it's a little bit funny, but I hope it all goes well. And. Uh, First of all, I'm really happy and honored to be giving talk about the four thoughts of which turns the mind uh, at KDD, which is the main seat of the wholeness to come over in North America. And although there are many um, great teachers and Rinpoches and Lama, but um, the members of KDD had requested me and choosing me to give a talk about this uh, topic. So, I mean, as for myself, I also feel uh, honored to be giving this talk at KPD. And um, so, I guess there will be some noise around because uh, there was no, there is no electricity in room tech for the last two days. So I had to come to a another place to do this talk because there is no electricity and the internet is very bad there so there must be some kind of noise i hope that's okay uh so before um, i start my talk here today as um kimbo had said earlier that the four thoughts which turns the mind is one of the basics in our Buddhist practice so you know like example like if you want to um, build something or you want to do something from the basic you should start it nicely right you should know the basic well so if the basic is good and it's well then means uh, we want it to understand much easier myself i'm also a student and uh here out here today we have many friends joining us and some must be new to this but i'm sure most of uh friends here are like our seniors friend uh senior friends who knows more than me and so uh it was just a reminder for those who have already heard about this topic from other Rinpoches or gurus and just a uh, small advice to the to those who are new here today and so so there are four thoughts which turn the mind and that is first it is the precious human life and second it is the impermanence and third it is karmic cause and effect and fourth it's the defect of samsara. So, uh, why is human life precious, right? So we all say like human life is very precious, but then we say, and how come there are so many humans here? If it's precious, then it should be very really rare, right? But it's like, example, um, how to say, it is precious because example as an iPhone, so, you know, the iPhone is very precious, right? And it's really hard to, to get also. 
But once you have it, you have to use it with care and love. Because if you sometimes like mistakenly you drop it or you throw it, then it might get broken or something. So same goes for the human life. It's very precious, and once you get it, you have to use it for a nice and better way. And and it's also very uh, easy to lose. So you have to be very careful with it, right? So uh, if I give an example, like wow, like example of how precious is human life. So there in the sutras of Buddha, in the Buddha himself, he had said. So imagine this whole world as the ocean, right? So like it would be really big, right? So big, and then inside that ocean, there's one. Turtle who is blind, okay, who cannot see. In such big ocean, there is only one turtle, and also who is uh, blind. And top of the ocean, there is a uh, wood uh, floating on the top of the ocean. In the uh, in the middle of the wood, there is a small hole. Every year, once a year, the turtle comes to the ocean. So, like once a year, he comes out one time. So the time he come out and like will his head be able to stuck inside the hole? Like it's really it's also not impossible, right? Because sometimes it may, but sometimes it won't. So it's like it's very difficult because there is wind blowing from all four directions. So sometimes the wooden will be taken to east, right? west, north, south. So it's like it's really really hard. But you cannot say it's not possible. I mean, not impossible also, right? So, but the, to get a human life is more uh, difficult than this one. So, than this example. And then, uh, if you like say uh, like the majority of human, actually nowadays we say like there are, what like seven billion people in this world, and we're like, wow, that's so much. That's a lot. But actually, it's not much, you know. So there has been example given by the Buddha. So like, imagine this whole world as a pile of dust, right? Pile of dust, and you take a on uh, your finger nail full of dust from that pile of dust, and there will be us like, um, how say there will be a little bit of dust here, right? So that is the number of human beings it's like exist in this world, you know? And then the rest of the the pile of the dust are the uh the changing being of the lower realm. You know, we have the three lower realms, right? The hell, the animal and the the uh the hungry ghost or the pretas. So like that's like how less we are. But in nowadays we say we are like seven billion or something, and it's, like it's a lot, right? But actually, it's not so much. <laughs> so, but then, um, as I said earlier, that the human life is very hard to get, but it's it won't take much to lose it or like you know destroy it, right? So, not only getting a human life is enough. You need to have the it. You need to. You have to be not born into the eight states that lack of freedom. So there are eight states. Like if you are born into those eight states, that means that you won't be able to do or practice dharma. So I'm going to say an example in I mean uh, sorry in Tibetan we say it nikomba uh, So which is the eight states that lack freedom. Nikomba in Tibetan means to not to be free. So from the word itself, it shows that what that means, right? So those are uh, eight states are the first one is the uh, hell being. So if you are being born in the hell realms, then you won't be able to practice or you won't be able to hear Dharma because you yourself will be suffering a lot. You will be suffering the heat, the hot hells and the coal hells and without any slightest break, right? So like every time you'll be having suffering from the hell realms and all the karmic you have caused. And so in the hell realm, it's not like if 
you get too much tortured and you uh, try it and it's finished, no. And you will again, like, reborn at the same place. And again, you will be having the same suffering. So, example, we say that uh, uh, one day in the hell realm is uh, one year in the human life. So, you can imagine how long is that. So, sometimes like, you'll be born in the hell realm for like 500 years. So, you can imagine how long that's going to be, right? And that's the first one. Then the second one is um, Hungry Ghost. Or, the, you know, you can say Petas. If you are being born into the realm of Hungry Ghost, then you won't be able to practice Dharma because um, you will be having the suffering of hungerness and thirsty. So you'll be always be like busy finding food or water. And that will be also like, you know, uh, very difficult to get because of your karma. So what did I, so what you get to drink is the speed that we people throw, right? You know, like some of the people that, especially in India, they, they speed a lot in the roads, right? So, yeah, so those are the only thing that the hungry ghosts can drink. And you know, the, how do you call that? And the snorts are the only thing that they can eat. So that's the karmic, so like, you know, if you are in points in the hungry ghost, then you won't be able to practice dharma because you will be too busy suffering from your hunger and thirst. And the third one is uh, the animal realm. So if you are being born in an animal realm, you won't be able to practice good uh, dharma because you are ignorant and you are too dull that you don't understand or know anything. So, and also you have the suffering of being eaten by something which is bigger than you and all, right? So that's the third one. And the fourth one is uh, to be born at a place where the Buddhism has spread, like where the Buddhism has spread our small and the place where it is not our, not our extendingly numerous, you know? So it means like to born where there's to born to a place where the Buddha's teaching has not been heard, you know. So like to be born in such place. If you have been born there, then you won't be able to practice Dharma because there is no uh, like there is no not even a word of Dharma out there. And the fifth one is the long-lived God of Desire. So. We say of oh, now, how come like that is one of the place which you shouldn't want because the God realm means something which we all want, right? Because we say it's one of the higher realm, but it's not that because if you are born in such place, you have too much happiness and you have everything that you forget to practice Dharma. You want to eat something, you just think of it, it will come. You want to go somewhere, you just think of the place you are there. So like you get too much happiness and too much uh, everything you want so that you get distracted by your attachments. So you won't be able to practice them. And even same goes for us. Uh, sometimes when we are really enjoying our day or we're having some good time, we won't remember to practice Dharma, right? We'll be busy enjoying or like doing other things, right? So that's the fifth one. And the sixth one is, uh, um, the sixth one is to have uh, wrong views about the uh, Buddha Dharma. Uh, means like to, to like extreme views and those who are naturally just like the Dharma, I have wrong views, something like that, right? So that's the sixth one. And the seventh one is, uh, you know, to be born at a place where, so example, like right now, we there's many eons, right? So right now, uh, example, we say it is the eon of the, we say, say it as a, the, I'll just say, the bright eon. So this is a time where all the thousand and two Buddhas will come and we, right now, the, put the Shakyamuni legacy is going on and we can hear the teachings and also we have many gurus and all, right? So, but there will be an eon which is known as the dark eon. So like that time there will be no Buddha uh, coming into this world. And 
if there is no Buddha, then there is no teachings and nothing. So if you have been born in such eons, then you won't be able to practice Dharma, right? And the eighth one is called uh, the um, so in uh, Tibetan we say Kupa, right? Kupa means actually in Kupa there is two meaning. In so one means uh, the one who cannot talk, and one means who is mentally, um, you know, having a mentally illness. So it doesn't mean the one who cannot talk because people who cannot talk they can understand everything, they can do everything. The only thing they can't do is they cannot talk, right? But still they can read from their mind and eyes and they can understand everything. But here, uh, that means the one who is having a mentally illness. So when, uh, when a person has a mentally illness, then he won't be able to um, understand each and everything, right? So be, so like to not to be born in all those, into the eight states. So. Those are the eight states which you shouldn't be born in. If you are born in such, in one of those states, then you won't be able to practice Dharma. So that's it. And next, we have the five internal resources and the five um, external resources. So that those are the things which you have to have if you are being born as a human life. So the five. So the first, the five internal resources are, um, first you have to obtain a precious human life. If you are not being born in this world, then how can you practice Dharma, right? So first you have to be a human yourself. You have to be born into a human, opposite of the eight states that lake measures, right? And second, you should be born in a central country. Central country means, uh, you know, like a place where the Buddha teaching is still going and still uh, flourishing. So like to be born in such countries. And the third one is, um, and the third one is, um, how to say, you have to be born with all your the facilities, not like you uh, you have been born deaf or dumb or you have been born blind or without arms or like, not like that. You have to be born with full as like, I would say it's full facilities. And the fourth one is, uh, you shouldn't, like, you shouldn't be born into a, um, uh, into a, let's say, uh, example, like, uh, into a wrong, wrong leaf food. Example, like, you have been born as a human, and you have been born to a central country and you have all your facilities, but you have been born to a livelihood, which like from the, it's your, how to say, it's your daily earns that you have to do. If you don't do it, then you won't be able to feed yourself or feed your family. So let's say example, to be born into a family of a butcher. So if you have been born into a family of a butcher, you have to, so you have to like, you know, carry your family work, like you have to, kill animal or you have to like you know kill other sentient beings that means so like to born in such things so to not to be born in such things and then the fifth one is uh, you have to uh how to say you have to have faith in the three jewels or have faith in the Buddha teachings and um other things so three jewels as well as um how do I say uh, uh as we are all uh, Buddhists, so I'm sure all of you know that being a Buddhist, you should know the main thing is the three jewels, right? So the great Atisha also said that the difference between uh, Buddhism and non Buddhism is the refuge, right? The refuge in the three jewels. So since here, the, you know, the fifth one says about the faith, so I thought I would tell a story about, like, you know, about the faith. I'm sure maybe most of you must have heard it before, but I'm going to say one more. So for those who have not heard it. Uh, so uh, I think this is not a, like, some kind of fairy tales of it. It's something which has happened in the past centuries. So in Tibet, uh, there was a mother and a son. So the son was a merchant. He was a businessman. So he has to go every year to India 
for his business, for his work. So uh, one day his mother told him that, son, so you have to go to India every time, right? And um, as you know, the India is very famous for the teaching of Buddha. And so, uh, so since you do, you won't have time to learn anything, but please bring me something which belongs to the Buddha. Example, like his clothes or like some of his textbook or something like that. Just please uh, try to bring something for me. And he said, and he accepted it. He said, okay. And then the son went to India and he did his work, his business, everything. But then he forgot to bring that and he came back home empty handed. And again, his mother was a little bit disappointed. And he did that for many times. He went back to India again for his work and he came back empty handed. And one time, now the mother got a little bit sad and angry. Then she told him, Now, this time, if you don't bring me anything, I will kill myself right in front of you. And the son got a little bit scared. He's like, okay, now this time, for sure, I will bring something. So again, he went to India for his work and everything. And he came back and painted this user. <laughs> so uh, then when he was about to reach his home, then he remembered his mother's word that if he didn't bring anything this time, she's going to kill herself. And he got so stressed and so like he wasn't like he didn't know what to do only and he kept looking around suddenly he saw a corpse of a dog and he went to the corpse of the dog and he plucked out the dog teeth and he wrapped them in a very expensive uh, I'll just, uh, silk since he got back from he got many silk with him and he wrapped the teeth in one of the most expensive silk and he went home. Once he reached home, he told his mom, okay, mom, this time I got you the, how to say, uh, the, a very precious and important thing of the Lord Buddha. And the mother was very happy and she asked, okay, tell me what have you got for me? And he said, I got you the teeth of the Lord Buddha. And the mother was really happy. Also, it was not a real Buddha teeth, it was just a teeth of a, a dog, right? But then the mother has so much faith in it, then she put it straight to the shrine room and she, you know, prayed to it every day and like every time. And suddenly one day when the son and mother were together in another room, there was a bright light from the shrine room. And when they both went to check and there was a relic being born from the dog's teeth. So as you all know that the tongue, the teeth was not a real Buddha teeth, right? It was um, just a normal dog's teeth. But the mother had so much faith and belief in it as a real Buddha teeth. So from that reason, there was a relic born from that. So that's why no matter what you do and what you practice, you have to have faith and believe in everything. And also, uh, as I said about the refuge, the three jewels, right? Which are the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. So, um, it's like, example, um, you can, uh, how to say, uh, uh, as a, I mean, I'm talking about the faith. So, there was two people who have the same illness, okay? And both of them went to the same doctor, and they showed the same doctor. And one, he has faith in the doctor as, okay, this doctor will cure me no matter what. But the other person was like, uh, I'm not sure if this guy will be able to cure me, uh, but let's see. So he wasn't really sure about him and he didn't really have faith in him. And after a few months of medication and everything, the, the person who had a faith in the doctor, he's completely... You know, uh, he's recovering. And the other one who doesn't have faith in that doctor, he's still the same, no improvement. So that shows uh, how important the faith is, right? So, yeah, that's it. That's the uh, fifth one of the five internet resources. Then uh, second, that's the five external resources, right? So that is, uh, so first, uh, the Buddha has to be come. So like also there are many universes which 
that was this which have been formed and also have been destroyed and it's also uh, difficult for a Buddha to appear even once but however in this age we have this eon we have the Shakya um, Muni Buddha appeared in this age right so that's the first one the appearance of the Buddha and also not only like the appearance of the Buddha is enough the Buddha has to give teach, teaching and because there is before uh, so far there were some Buddhas like they did not like they do not teach Dharma even once even they appeared but they didn't really teach Dharma right so but this time it's not like that the Buddha Shakyamuni he appeared and he also gave his teaching and not only he just appeared and gave teaching the teaching has been remained until now right and not only that but we have we are like there's people uh, who are following me right and that's the fourth one right this for the second number but the first one is um the buddha being appeared and the second one the is the buddha's teaching and the third one is um the teaching which have been remained till now and the fourth one is the is us those uh who are following the the, the teaching and the fifth one is uh, to be helpful for others means to be uh, to have uh, bodhicitta for others so uh, as we say that so now those are the five external resources and so those are like total the ten resources which uh, you need if you have been born as a human life. So if you have been born uh, without being born into the eight states and also you have this ten resources, that means you are uh, you have the perfect human life, the precious life. So as us, as all of us who are watching here with us today, so we have this, I mean, we have this precious human life so we shouldn't waste any time in our daily life or we shouldn't be uh, you know uh, we should focus more on practicing dharma and doing more um, good merit so we can make a good use of it so example as i said earlier that it's the human life is same as the iphone so that it's hard to get but easy to lose and once you have it, you should make a good use of it, right? If not, then uh, it's really, how to say, it's really disappointing. <laughs> so uh, that's um, the, so that's the first one, the first, uh, the, how to say, it's the first, the precious human life. And even, you know, the, from the text of the, Cha of the Mahamudra, the uh, what uh, I forgot the, the text by the Jamgan Lorutaye, uh, the torch of true meaning. You know, there he said that first meditate on this precious human body, so difficult to gain, so easy to lose. So, as I said, it's so difficult to gain, but it's easy to lose. But this time, I should I shall make it meaningful. How to make it meaningful? So like, you know how to make it meaningful now. So how to make it meaningful means not like you have to, uh, you know, like, okay, I take care of my body. I have to start working out. I have to have good uh, body shape. It's not like that. To make it meaningful means not only this life, but also in your other life, you know? So, so to have a other, if you want to be born again in this precious human life, in your other life, then there's only one thing which can help you do that. That is to practice the Buddha's teaching or practice Dharma. So that is what uh, we all should have in mind. So now we should uh, I'll go to the second one, so which is the impermanence, right? So impermanence, that is uh, what we know every time, but we don't really care about it, right? <laughs> So um, even in this, how uh, to say? So right now here also, we are all together now. But who knows? Like if 
tomorrow we still will be alive or not, right? Really, like we cannot say anything because it's impermanence. So the life is impermanence. That's why you shouldn't waste any time and you should uh, always practice or start practicing Dharma and all. So uh, how to, you know, like think about impermanence. First, uh, I would say, reflect that nothing lasts, everything changes. For example, like since you are born until now, uh, so example, as for me, I'm like almost now 24. So since I'm born until now, there's many things which has been changed right in front of my eyes, right? In my hometown also, and also like I have been in room tech for the past 18 years. And in all those years, I have seen lots of changes. So those are impermanence, right? It's the change that we see right in front of ourselves. And even for all of you others, so, um, you, I'm sure you also have noticed a lot of changes in front of you all also. So that's the same thing. And then think of like how many others have died that you know. Example, like so last few years we had hard time during the pandemic, right? We know how many people have died in this world. And also how many people that we know and those who are close to us have died. So from that, you can see that it's impermanence, right? So you cannot, like, you cannot predict that you won't die or you won't, you, you will live long, you know? Even those who are really strong, even those who are famous actors, even those who were like the famous modelers, they also like passed away during the COVID, right? So nothing is permanent. And then, there's then one more thing about the impermanence. There's many causes of death again and again. So, because our life is like, it's really, I would just say, um, it's really uh, easy to lose. Example, our life is like a bubble, you know, a water bubble. When there's a water bubble, you just, I would say, you just uh, blow and the water bubble will break, right? So it's that easy to break or lose, you know? It's really, really easy. And also, there is not so many, there is no any, uh, you know, like, cause to stay long or live longer, but there is many cause of, and reasons to, you know, for the that example, like, I was collapsing or like building, destroying or like uh, buildings getting caught in fire, uh, rock falling down from mountains and you are like under it and I would say the landslides and like there's many things which can cause the death again and again, right? So that's all in permanence. And one more thing is what will happen at the time of death when you are so sometimes, you know, you, you don't even have time to think that oh, this is my last uh, moments. Now I'm about to die. You know, you just don't know when you will come. But some people, they get sick and they get old and then they die. At that time, when at that time of, time of the thing, like when you know that this is your last moment in this world, that time, you know, what you have to think? And what is the thing that will help you in that time and also after you pass away or after you die? There's only one thing which... Uh, can help you during that time and also we can help you after you die. So that's the Buddha's teaching, right? So if you have practiced well in your life, if you have done lots of good merit, if you have earned lots of virtues in your life, then when you when your life comes to an end, you don't have regret that okay, I haven't done this. You can have a peaceful uh, that thinking I have done all the things which I need to do. Now I'm ready to go for another adventure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So like I'm ready for like whatever the next thing might be, right? So like that. And then, you know, uh, the other, there's, a, there's like other reasons that you have to know that is if you are being born, then you have to die, right? So there's a saying in, in Tibet that it goes like, you are being born, you have to die. If you earn something, you have to lose it someday. 
if you meet someone one day you have to get separated so it's all the karmic and the impermanence and that's like so you if you're born you have to die and there's no age that you can say you will die right there's no such thing that you can say okay now i still have five more years or i still have 10 more years or like i will live until i'm 90 years old or I'll, like something like that you cannot predict so you never know when you will come and there's no age so, you know as a normal human being you know our parents they tell us that okay from this age to this you have to study in school this age to this you have to go to college this age you have to get married this age you have to start working <laughs> this age you start uh, your well, like family and everything so there is an age for all this but there is no such age for your death. like okay now this age is your final age so you have to practice dharma <laughs> there's no such thing as that so you have to practice dharma always whenever you get time right and then when you die there's nothing you can take there's only one thing which you can take with you that's the dharma and the all the good or the marriage, good marriage which you have earned, right? And you know, uh, we say there's four um, continents, right? Continents, Charlie, Papo, Lodzam, Buling, Nu, Parang, Chang, Gaminian, to the east, west, north, south. Right now, we're in uh, the Lo, Zambuling, which is the earth, right? So, in the other um, continents, except earth, out there, you know, you can know when you're gonna die. So like, you can know your life span, like how long you're going to live. But in Earth, it's not there. So you never know when you're going to die. Even like some small baby which are born today, after a few hours, they stop breathing. And after, or some like after a few weeks, they stop breathing. So that like, there's no life span in this Earth. So like you cannot uh, predict. And there is many costs for death, but nothing to leave to leave as I said earlier there's so many costs for that but there's nothing which you can do to leave more if you if you just got into a car accident and you're about to die but there's nothing which can make your life again right so yeah so like there's many um, costs for that but nothing to leave and then no matter how many friends you have you have thousand friends or you have thousand friends in Facebook or you have million friends in or uh, followers in Instagram or anything, but when you die, none of them will be able to help you in anything, right? And not only those friends, but also this body which you have spent your entire life together, you won't be able to take it with you, right? So those friends are nothing. Even this uh, body which you have been spending your entire life together, you won't be able to take that also. And also all the wealth or fame or everything you have earned will be no use uh, during the time of death. So the only thing which will be useful for at that time of uh, death and also for the afterlife is the Dharma. And that means like we should practice Dharma during our daily life, not only like, okay, if you are doing some work today or you are busy, you will say, okay, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow because today I'm busy. Or you will say like, okay, today we are having some picnic, so I will, I'll practice tomorrow. Or I, today we have a big dinner party, so I have to go for that, so I will practice it again tomorrow. So you feel like, it's not like that, you know, because you are not sure that if you'll be able to wake up again tomorrow morning or no. So you should, the main thing about practicing, practicing Dharma is, uh, you know, how do you call that? Um, to practice uh, tolerance, if you stay high up in the mountain, then you won't know that you have, you know, like if you have um, destroyed your, if you have really practiced tolerance, because there's no one there which you can practice. There is no one there to shout at you. There's no one there to show you anger. So you don't know that if you have achieved you have not, right? So same thing goes for the practicing Dharma. It's not like we should practice only during our free time, but we should practice it during our busy life. So that's the main challenge that we should do. So uh, that's the second one. Uh, I mean, the impermanence.
So the third one is um, cause and effect. So that's also one of the most important thing. So example, cause and effect means so uh, if you plant an apple, you will get an apple, right? If you plant an orange, you will get an orange. If you plant an uh, papaya, you will get a papaya. If you plant an apple, you won't get orange. And if you plant an orange and you want an apple, you will get orange only, you won't get apple, right? So that's how our cause and effect works. So you do something bad in your past, but then you regret it, then you want something good, and you hope for that, that's not gonna happen. You'll get what you have done in your past, what you have caused, right? So that's the cause and effect. And then, um, as we are all human beings, so like no matter who you are, if you have been born as a human, we have the three poison in ourselves. So those are, of course, the anger, the hatred, the and the laziness, right? So, sorry, uh, the anger and the uh, laziness and attachment. So you have anger toward your enemies or those who are. Uh, enemy to your close one or those who are enemy to yourself and you have attached to your close one and your loved one and then to being lazy during practicing or like in everything right so that are the three poisons that you should try to you know uh, go over it I, I, of course you cannot but you should try to reduce it as as much as you can so talking about the cause and effect so you know uh, you should know about the 10 unworthy choose action the virtue and the non-virtue, right? So I'm sure many of you must have known, I mean, you, should, you know about this, but uh, I would like to say it again, because we may have some new, as I said earlier, we may have some new friends here. So I'm just gonna repeat it again for all of them. So the first one is taking life, right? To kill someone, that's the first one. So no matter like, it's, a, it's something smaller, it's an it's a insect, or it's something bigger than you, like an elephant or anything, or even it's a human being. If you kill it, you can earn some bad merits, right? And the second one is um, uh, how to say, stealing, like taking what is not yours. So you go out somewhere, use something good, and you don't have the, the, uh, you don't have the facilities to buy it. Then what you do is you try to steal it, right? So you shouldn't do that. And the third one is sexual misconduct. So as for for the uh, as for late people, they have their own vows, and they as for or months, they have their own vows. So like not, you no. Know, uh, so like with the vows, so you shouldn't do any mis uh, sexual misconduct. And the fourth one is uh, was, so. In the virtues also, there are like, you know, the, there are 10 unvirtues, right? So the first are the three non-virtues of the body. So that's what I said first now, right now. The first is taking life or killing. And the second one is, uh, is uh, stealing. And the third one is sexual misconduct. So those are the unvirtues which have been done by our body, which is our own human body, right? So, and then after this, um, there are the four non virtue of speech, which has to be do with the speech. And the first one is um, telling lie. So, example, uh, you call your friend today and you say, hey, there's no class, the teacher is sick. Actually, there is class, but you just say, hey, there's no class because the teacher is sick and he won't be coming. And your friend is also, he's of course happy because there's no class and he doesn't come to the school. But it made him happy also, but actually it's a, it's a, it, I mean, it's a unvirtue because he believed in what you said and what you said was not true, right? So that's it. And the second one is um, uh, divisive speech, like, you know, trying, you don't like that person really from your heart, but when you're with him and you're trying to be really friendly with him, you're trying to be very low, like lovely with them, but once you are like behind him, then you start saying bad things or like that. No, so that's the second one. And the third one is harsh, um, harsh speech, saying bad words or saying um, things which really hurts the other people. So even the Buddha himself has said like that. 
the tongue is sharper than what um, the sword. It can kill people without any blood, right? That means it shows how powerful can a hatred speech be. So that's why you should never use any harsh, uh, harsh speech or like you know all those stuff. And the fourth one is um, idol chatters, right? You know. Idol chatters means um, like talking about nothing which is none of your business. Some random things which is nothing to do with the thing you are but you are still trying to, you know, like talk about this. So those are the four noun words use of the speech. And now after that, uh, it's the three noun words use of the mind. So those are the last three ones which is from your mind or from your thoughts. So those are the first one is the Conventionist of thinking, which is like, um, if only I had that guy's wealth, if only I had that guy's uh, fame and like all those things, you know, like to think. Of, so, example, um, right now in our time, it's like, if only if I had so much followers on Instagram like that guy, if only I had so much fans on Facebook like that people. So, like to think such things is one of the known virtues of the mind. And the second one is uh, how to say uh, to think uh, like you know Alice in being displayed of someone else's happiness or or wealth. Ah, uh, he got so much happiness. He got so much wealth. I wish his happiness would be ended soon. I wish he'll have a sorrowful life soon, or I wish he'll turn into a. Uh, bankrupt soon for something like it, to think bad about people of what they have and then the third one the last one is uh, as I said earlier to have wrong views about the Buddha and about what he said for example the Buddha said there's past and future lies there's karmic cause and effort there's the qualities of three jewels but then you say ah it's all fake like Buddha didn't really say such things Sorry, to have a wrong view to what Buddha has said. So those are the three uh, non-virtues of the mind. The total, there are 10 non-virtues or non-virtues which you should, uh, how to say, avoid, right? And then even, how to say, um, if you contact all those uh, non-virtues, and your action and action of that those non virtues that you to be born in the uh, lower realms such as hell realms or as I said earlier the animal realms or the hungry ghost and even if you are born in a human then you will have lots of uh, much suffering such as uh, like not staying like you know not uh, having a short life because you have in your past life you have taking someone else's life and uh, being born into a poor family because you have still and you have like you know you have still many things in your past life so like such things will happen if you have done so then so that's why you should always do the opposite of those 10 known virtues which are the 10 virtues so those are all the same so like you just have to you know uh, the opposite of all those 10 things which i said and then, uh, how to say, so if you, how to say, if you uh, do all the 10 virtuous actions, then uh, how to say, you, so the, actually, I, it's not like how to say, I'm actually, so what are the benefits if you like, do all this virtuous action? But you shouldn't think that, okay, now I'm going to do all these virtuous things because I, if I do this, I'll have this in my next life. So if I do that, I'll have that in my next life. So if you have such expectation and you practice all this, that means it won't happen because you are practicing something because for the expectation only, right? So that is not a real Mahayana practitioner, right? So now uh, example like so, uh, the benefits are if you give up harming other and help other you may have a long life right and if you um, always be 
university to other or uh, like poor people or like whoever who need help and you may have a how to say a wealthy or a pleasant life in the next life and if you uh, how to say if you uh, have uh, how to say uh, what you call that if you do offerings to the jewel to the three jewels and to your gurus and to your parents and to so forth everyone then you'll have a how to say a peaceful life in your in the next life so like that kind of things are there but you shouldn't think that oh now I should start doing all those virtuous actions because there is many good benefits about that so you should never think that and you should always do you know, you should always do this as much as you are able to, and you'd always get others to do them as well, you know. And if you have done all those in the till now, then you have to be rejoiced and happy about that. And if you have done any uh, known virtuous action in your past life or like past in your past, then you have to be regret about those. And so that's why uh, I would just say hmm, if you really uh, practice all those 10 virtuous things, then you will have a uh, uh, beautiful and a better effect in your next life. So whatever you want to be or you want to happen in your next life depends whatever you do in this life, right? So that's the cause and effect. And uh, I thought of saying this also that um, how to say um, so in our daily life so you know so we wake up in the morning and we do whatever you have to do and like you do a work have like cooking or everything and then you come go out to do your work then you come back again and you have your lunch and again you start doing your things and all those stuff so at night when you sleep you shouldn't just like you know jump on the bed and just snore like pick <laughs> you should think like what good virtues and good merit you have earned in this um whole day like you know like um just give few minutes like what you have really done in this whole day what good things you have done if you really have done or you have helped someone then you uh, should offer those good merits to all the gurus and the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas in all direction. And by any chance, if you have done any bad merits or you have done any bad things, then you should take forgiveness to all the Buddha and Bodhisattva. So, if you then after having such thoughts and if you sleep, then your whole night, the whole sleep can turn into a good action. You know, it can turn into a good. Um, marriage. So sometimes we go out and we have a very really bad day and we come back home and we get more angry at our friends and all. Then we sleep with full of angerness. That means your whole sleep can turn into a bad marriage. And then the next morning when you wake up, don't just like jump off the bed and go to do your work. So just be grateful and happy that I have opened my eye today. I am very lucky to be alive today. Right, because it is in it is impermanence that we all know. We never know that when our you know this uh, breathing can stop. So we are really lucky and joyful to be alive today. So today, whole day, I'll try to do as much as good things and good merits as I can do, and I will try to avoid as much as bad merits or virtues on I can avoid. So if you start your daily life like that, you can really change, and you know, you can, you can really uh, bring some change in it. So um, that's the thing about the cause and effect. Now, next and the final one is the defects of saramsa, right? So as we all know that we are in the saramsara, right? In the sam sorry, sam samsara. And samsara is like a deal to us, you know. We don't have happiness in this. We want to get out of it, but still we don't know how to, right? But we know that there's only one thing that it can 
get us out of here, which is the Dara, which is to practice Dharma, but still we are always being lazy and all those stuff so that we are not able to do it, right? So, uh, in the Samsara, there is six realms, right? So, the human and the uh, hell realm and the uh, sorry, and the hungry ghost and the animal realm and the demigods and the god realm. So there are six realm. So no matter which realm you are born into it, you are still in the samsara, right? So the only thing which is to not to born into the samsara is to achieve the Buddhahood, to enter the land of the Buddha, right? So that's the only thing. So for that, it's not that easy. So like you have to gain a lot of merits in all this life we have taken. So like we know there's a rebirth and everything. And if we do well in this life, then next in our next, we may also be born as a human. So you, and then you also, if you try to continue the same thing, then once you have earned enough merits and enough virtues, then you will be able to achieve right so that's why if we, if we do good practice and we do good drama in this life then next life also we will be like you know there is a, let's say how to say there is a effect from the past that the next life also will be you will be uh, able to do practice and all because you have a you know effect from the past life so that's why we have the cause and effect right so it's like that only. so uh, so in the samsara, there is um, full of so the samsara is full of suffering. We say right, in the suffering we have the suffering of suffering, the suffering of change, and the mm, pervasive suffering of composition. So the first one is suffering of suffering means to have suffering even when you are suffering. So example, uh, uh, I'm sure most of you know the life story of the Ampopa, right? So Gambopa, when before he became a monk, he was a very famous doctor. And there was no such illness which he could he could cure. But when his own children and wife was sick, he couldn't do anything. And when he went to, and when his first children got sick and died, and he went to put his children's dead body in the cemetery, and when he came back, his other children were sick and also died. So. And when he went to put his second children to the cemetery and came back, his wife was sick and she also passed away. So that's an example of the suffering of suffering, right? And in our daily life, if we talk about the suffering of suffering, it's like you have stomach ache, then you get headache. So suffering against suffering. And then you get COVID and there's more suffering, right? So it's like having more suffering, like having plus, 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 something like that. And the second one is suffering of change. So like, so today you are having some good food and like you're having a big piece. But again, tomorrow you have a stomach ache, that's for sure. So that's the suffering of change. No matter what you do, but there's a suffering after it, right? So if you, uh, how to say, if you uh, drink too much alcohol, then really those who drink it, it makes them happy right that's why they're like consuming it but later is a suffering for them they'll have health issues or they'll have headache in the next morning they'll be hungover so like all the stuff is the suffering of change and the third one is uh, the suffering of composition so those are like uh, how to say um, example is uh, if you put a piece of hair in your hand it won't really feel anything, right? Only one piece of hair, if you put it on your hand, it won't really feel anything, right? It's just nothing. But that same hair, if you put it in your eyes, it will be really pain. The pain will be really unbearable, right? So the suffering of the composition is like that. So for us, it is like, we don't see it as a suffering, but for those the noble ones and the noble being, they see it. Example as, you know, the famous actors and famous uh, people in the world. So they, uh, they don't really have any suffering. They have everything they want. They can get everything they want because they're 
they have all the abilities, but they don't see this as a suffering. But those who are in the higher realms, as uh, how do you call, as the Dutch ones or the noble one, they see this as a suffering because they know no matter how much you have in this life, if you don't practice enough dharma, then you are going to get some suffering in your next life or in future, right? So that's the third one. And, uh, you know, example, so we said there's uh, six realms, right? So we don't really, I mean, if I give an example, we can observe those six realms in human life, okay? Example, uh, uh, the, so first is the hell realm. So in this world, we have some places which is very cold, right? So if you are out there, you really have the suffering of that cold. And you know how much cold is it? And some people, they die because of cold, right? And in then some places in the earth, it is very hot. For example, like in India, you know, like the Bodh Gaya or New Delhi or it's sometimes the temperature gets too high that people die, right? So in this world also we can you know observe the six realms. So that is the hell realm, the hot and the cold hell realm, right? And the second one is um, the hungry coast. So many of you have been to Bodh Gaya and you can see how many poor people are there, right? And they all they want is something to eat or something to drink. And they're trying, they're coming and asking us for food and drink only because they, the only thing they want to get over is their hunger and thirst, right? So even in this human life, we have the six rounds, you know, we, we can observe it. So that's the hungry ghost. And then the animal. So animal is not like we had to really be born into an animal. So the animal means like, you know, to be someone which you cannot understand anything. You are a um, like you cannot understand what is good and what is bad. You cannot understand what is virtue and what is non-virtue. So like to be, and then even in this world, even in like, you know, people around you, we have some people like that also. And then after that, it's the human life. So you're the human, right? So you know what that is. <laughs> and then is the demigod. So you know what the demigod is, the demigod is, they're always fighting for no reason, right? So example, we have like, you know, in, we have many wars going on right now and we have some, you know, even in our daily life, we have some people who are always fighting for no reason. So that is an example of a demigod. And then it's the, the realm of the god, right? So in the realm of the god, you can get whatever you want. So even in this world, we have some people who are so rich that they can get whatever they want. They can observe, they can, you know, whatever they think, they can have it. So even we think like, ah, oh, maybe the God realms is like this only. Like whatever you want, you just have it. So that's why, yeah, you know, we can observe the six realm in the human being. Yeah, so as I told you, that's how is it. And also, um, speaking of the suffering, so the suffering of the lower realms, I told you guys earlier in in the uh, the precious human life, right? So now I want to tell about the three suffering of the upper realms, you know, the human life, the demigods, and the god. So the human life, we, the, we have four sufferings, right? So the suffering of birth, death, and sickness, and old age. So when we are born, we, like, we really have lots of suffering. It's just because that we cannot remember what happened, right? So even for us, we cannot remember what happened to us at, at the age of one or at the age of one or two because we are so, so small. But like that only, like we also, when we were born in this world, we really had lots and lots of sufferings. Like, you know, they say when you have been, when, born out of your mother warm and we try to, uh, try to uh, clean you with the towel, you know, you feel like as you have been, you know, wiped with the, uh, how to say, a cloth full of thrones and all that, you know, you have all the suffering as when you are being born. After that, it's the suffering of old age. So old age, and we all can see those people around us getting old, 
And they also get really sad when they become old because they cannot do what they could do in the past. You know, they are not strong as they used to be strong. They are, they are not clever or sharp mind as they used to be before. So that's the suffering of old age. And then the suffering of sickness, you know, once, for example, like, you know, many of us, even me, uh, we had, like, I got COVID, so we know how much suffering we had it during that time. So that's the suffering of sickness. And then the last, the suffering of death. So if you have done enough um, virtues in your whole life, if you have practiced Dharma, you have done good things, then when you die, you won't really have that suffering of that because you don't have to be scared of anything right and those people who have really done bad virtues and they have really earned bad merits in their life and when they die you know they see the hell people coming or to you know like to uh, hold them or like coming to call them or they see themselves in the hell them being burning around so like that's the the like you know the cause of being like earning so much of bad merits the second one is the suffering of demigods. So as I said early, the demigods, they have the suffering of fighting. So you know the reason they are fighting is there's a tree. The tree is being planted in the demigod realm. But the tree is so tall that the, the fruit and everything, it grows on the, in the god realm. So the the gods in the upper realm, they're enjoying the fruits of their tree. So that's why they're, you know, fighting with them. Now they know that they can never win over a god because the god, they have the power, they have the army, they have anything they can do. But still, they're, you know, always fighting for that. So that's the suffering of them. I mean, god. Even though they know that they will never win, but still they are like fighting for it. And they're losing people and everything. And last is the realm of the God. So we can, you know, like some of us may think, how come the God have suffering? Because the God is one of the highest realm and they have everything, they can get everything. How come they have suffering? It's not like that. The, you know, the God, they have the worst suffering, one of the, you know, very, uh, how to say, it, scariest point because that is, they know where they're gonna be reborn next. So even as us human, we and we die, we don't know where we are gonna born again. So we are okay with it, right? We may be born as human, or we may go to the lower realm, or we may be born as the upper realm. So we don't know, but still we are okay. But the, in the God realm, it's not like that, you know. Um, you can know that where you are gonna be born next. So if you are gonna be born as a god again, you are okay. If you are gonna be born as a human, you are okay. But if you are gonna be born as a born in the hell realm, then you'll have a lot of suffering, right? So that's the most uh, difficult suffering they have. And one more suffering they have is the the god. They never have to clean themselves. They're always clean. They're always very like full of fragrance, and they have like you know all those. Um, um, like Takinis around them and all those um, like many uh, friends around them but once their life pain is about to end their body you know the, the, if they, you know the many gods they have all this obviously the brightness and the color but try to like you know the color will be going down there will be like less color and there will be less fragrances and you know, their body will start to sting and their friends and everything will be like trying to avoid them. And you know, how much worse feeling is that? Even as a human being, when your friends try to teach you, you really feel sad and angry, right? So you can, yeah, you can feel how like hard that is. So that's the uh, main suffering of the go to land. So if you are being born in, um, how to say, in this, Saramsa, then you know you have to go through all this six realms, which are always full of suffering. So the main thing is uh, how to say to be not born again into this samsara and to attain uh, the 
Buddhahood, right? So those are the four, four thoughts which turns your mind. So you can practice more, uh, how to say, uh, dharma and practice more. You can earn more good virtues and all. So uh, I think that's all we're going to talk about today. So um, as I said earlier that um, even though I couldn't share so much about, so I tried my best sharing whatever I know. And also I had, uh, I've been quite busy for the last few months, few weeks, so I didn't really get a good time to, you know, um, uh, prepare also, but I hope whatever I have shared here today will be really uh, helpful for each and everyone who have been here and like spending their time and listening to me. And I hope it really uh, benefits you all. And all I want to say is, uh, as I said earlier, that we all know that the only thing which can help us to free all no, no. from all the suffering is the teaching of Buddha and the practice of Dharma. So we all have to try or we all have to, you know, um, try as much as we can practice and as much as, you know, we have to practice the Dharma as much as we can do so that we all will be free from this uh, samsara. So um, that's all I would like to say. And I would like to thank all the members and the presidents and the Campbells and everyone in KDD for having me today out here to give this talk. And I really feel honored to giving this talk also, although I'm, I said earlier that I'm also a, a learner myself, but I feel really not to be here and giving this talk to everyone here and i hope it has really um, benefit each and everyone and for um, uh, for all those members in tdd uh, like you all are really how to say uh, blessed and really um how to say uh, uh, so now i've been my english is not that good but i'm trying my best uh you are really, I would just say, um, um, blessed to be serving and working at KTT because it is one of the main seat of His Holiness, the Seventeen Kiaman Kamaupa. So, uh, serving out there means to serve His Holiness. There is no such difference. So, I'm really thankful for all the members and all the volunteers and everyone. And so I would like to conclude my talk out here. Thank you so much. Or Machela, the Tugi Long Name, Medorwa, Kaji, Samadan, Kaji, Chachua, Sumba, Shindone, Katin, Chi, Shubu, Namaya, Yang, Yang, Do, Zeni, Naja, Tuji, Silva, Nara, Nara, Rambachala, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude for your precious teaching, keeping us in mind. You gave us uh, such a wonderful teachings. And in the future also, we would like to request you to give us, keep giving us teaching again and again in the future. Thank you very much, Rambachala. Okay, we will do the dedication prayer. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, 
Sama ya sadu. 